Let's up accelerated algebra two, stir up here. Now this is on 6L, finding roots and kind of building our understanding of this and how we find roots. So what is the relationship between solutions of an equation and its factors? It's basically where it crosses the x-axis. Or when plugged in, it equals zero, okay? So we want to factor out x squared minus 13x plus 36 equals zero. What values would we consider? Well, you know, you have factors of 36. So you would consider those. So you'd have x minus 4 and x minus 9. Oops. So those are both equal to zero. So x equals 4 and x equals 9. So how do the solutions connect with 36? Well, those are the factors of 36. Those are the values that where it would cross the x-axis when we, uh, if we graphed it as y equals, if we plugged 4 and 9 back into the original, the original would come out to 0 equals 0, which is what you want. That's the definition of a solution. So my, what might be the useful solutions of this next one? So we know you, we'd have a positive or negative component, but you have factors of 60, 1 and 60, 2 and 30. 3 and 20, 4 and 15, and so, and there's there's more there, but this would be the one that would work, where we'd have a positive 30 and a negative uh, 2, and that's what x would be equal to in each of those, so you'd get negative 30 for a solution, where it'd cross the x-axis, and positive 2, where it'd cross the x-axis. Um, how does the leading coefficient change things? Really what this leading coefficient really does, you know, yes, it does change into our factor, so we're going to create um, fractions, but this actually makes it grow faster at the ends. But you would, again, when you're going through this, you know, you might look at this saying, you know, I could, I could factor out, you know, the factors of 120 because 60 times that. We know both terms have to be negative, so the factors of 120 or 1 and 120, 2 and 60, uh, 3 and 40, uh, let's see, 4 and 30, 5 and, what is that, uh, 24, so 5 and 24 would work, so uh, basically if you were to factor this out, you'd get 2x squared plus 5x plus 24x, actually, excuse me, those are both supposed to be negative, I'm sorry. And then plus 60. You'd look for a greatest common factor here, so that'd give you 2x plus 5. Greatest common factor here, being that this is a negative here, I would make that negative. And I would factor out a 12. So then that would give us 2x plus 5 and x minus 12, which means they'd both be equal to, I'd have solutions of 12. Subtract 5 divided by 2 and negative 5 over 2. So there's two different solutions that would work there. Okay, so we talked about this uh, the other day in class, uh, rational zero. So you're taking all the factors of the end and the beginning. So if you had like say 5x raised to the 10th power plus a whole bunch of stuff plus uh, 6, you take all the factors of 6 and the positive and negative components of it over all the factors of 5. And so any one of those, so you'd have 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 6 over 1, or you'd have 1 over 5, 2 over 5, 3 over 5, or 6 over 5. Those could be where we might have a solution to our problem. That gets into what we are talking about with the Descartes rule of signs in class the other day. So a list of possible zeros. So you want to take all the factors of 18 over all the factors of 1. So you have the positive and negative components. So 1 goes in 18, 2 goes in 18, 3 goes in 18, 6 goes in 18, 9 goes in 18, and 18 goes in 18. The only factors of 1 are that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18, the positive or negative, any of those could be a solution to the problem. Same with this one, I have a lead coefficient of that, so I'm going to take all the factors of 40 over all the factors of 1, 
So we have the positive and negative components. We have one goes into 40, two does, three does, and four does, five does, six does, and seven does, and eight does, nine does, and 10 does, 20 does, and then 40 over all the factors of one. So any one of those could be one of the solutions to a problem. It could be multiple ones, but it could be that. Then the last one, I want all the factors of 36 over all the factors of 2. Again, I want the positive and negative components. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, uh, 9, 12, 18, and 36 over all the factors of 1 or 2, positive and negative. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, 36. You also have 1 over 2. 2 over 2, which is 1, which you already did. 3 over 2. 4 over 2, which is 2, which you already did. 3 over, or 6 over 2, which is 3, we already did. Six, 9 over 2. 12 over 2, which is 6, we already did. 18 over 2, which is 9, we already did. And then 36 over 2, which is 18. And the positive and negative components over any of those. So there's a whole bunch of factors that could work to give us one of our three solutions to our problem. Okay, so we want to decide which one of these is a factor using synthetic division. So I'm going to start with one, see if that works. So I don't have any gaps, so I can just go ahead and put those down. This comes straight down. One times one is one. Add those straight down. That's two. Two times one is two. Add those straight down. I get negative nine. Negative nine times one is negative nine. Add those straight down, so you get one. So that actually gives us the point one comma one. It's not a solution, but it's a point on the graph. And then we're going to try negative 1, do the same exact thing with it. So I'm bring that straight down. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Straight down, I get 0. 0 times that is 0. Uh, I get negative 11. Negative 11 times that is 11. So that gives me 21. So again, that'll give me the point negative 1, comma, 21. So it's not really a waste of time by doing it because it is giving you factors that work. So both of those don't work. So let's try two, see what happens here. Positive 10. So that's one. One times two is two. That's three. Three times two is six. Add and straight down still. That gives me negative five. Negative five times two is negative 10. So it gives it a zero. So Because I have a zero down here, this means the point two comma zero. And that zero right there in the y component means we have a solution. Okay, that solution is where it crosses the x-axis. If I plug the 2 in to the x's, I would get 0 equals 0, okay, which is great. And then if, we, if I tried the negative 2 as well, it's kind of a waste, to, but we could still do it. Uh, so you get 1, that's negative 2. That's going to give me negative 1. That's going to give me 2. That's going to give me negative 9. That's going to give me 18. So that gives me 28. So that tells me that I get, have the point negative 2 comma 28 as a solution to our graph, or as a point on our graph. So again, you want to have the zero fall into the very last category. Okay, so we want to go ahead and evaluate this. So I'm going to take all the factors of two over all the factors of one. So I have plus or minus one, plus or minus two over the factors of one. Okay, and I guess I don't have those. So the things that will work are plus or minus one, and plus or minus 2. Those are what I'm going to synthetically divide by to see if it works. So I'm going to take the 1 first. My lead coefficients, I don't have any gaps. I have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 as my exponents. So I don't have to put any zeros in. 1 times 1 is 1. Bring that down as a 0. I get a 0. It gives me negative 2. That's negative 2. It gives me negative 3. Negative 3 times that is negative 3. Straight down, that's negative 2. It gives me a negative 2 there, straight down, 0. Oh, great. So you know what? Uh, the point 1, 0 exists. So 1 is a factor or a solution, crosses the x-axis. So the nice thing about when you do this is then you can go and plug your x values back in. So this is basically x to the fourth plus 0x to the third minus 2x to the second minus 3x minus 2. So that becomes a smaller thing to divide by. Okay, we still have these to go with, so we can check to see if one works again because you could have, have a bounce, you could have a wiggle, so it could happen multiple times, but we're not quite sure. So let's just forsake 
see if uh, negative 1 gives us anything a little bit better. And some of you might be looking saying, hey, why did that reduce by 1? And it's because I already factored 1. Okay, because I got a 0 at the end. That allowed me to put that in. So I'm going to take my lead coefficients of this. So I'm not taking them, all of them from the original. I'll take them from this new one. So look at that. I now found that negative 1 comma 0 also would have worked. If I had divided originally by the negative 1 on the original red problem, it would have worked out the same way. So now, right now I have x minus 1 and x plus 1 as binomial factors, which gives me the solution 1 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. And then if you kept going with this problem, so this one, if I were to put my x's back in, it would give me x to the third minus x squared minus x minus 2. Notice again, it's one degree less than what the original had been. So then, let's just, just I think this is going to happen. Let's see if what 2 would happen here. So I'm going to get 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2. Bring this straight down. 1 times 2 is 2. Add those. So I get 1. 1 times 2 is 2. It gives me 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So I get a 0. So look at that. Negative, or 2 comma 0 is a solution. So that gives me the binomial of x minus 2. That would have worked. But this is also a solution. Now what's really nice is this right here. If I put my x's back in, it had been x to the third, but now it's x to the second. And you could try to factor that, but it's not going to factor. So this, that's going to basically mean that my I could use the quadratic formula to get the rest of the solutions out of it. So x equals negative 1 plus or minus 1 squared minus 4 a c so minus 4 over 2 so negative 1 plus or minus root negative 3 over 2 so I have two complex solutions two solutions that are part of the imaginary numbers and that's a, the key about this is imaginary numbers always come as conjugate pairs they always happen that way so you don't have any more to do with that okay so if we put it all together Take a look at this. I'm going to take all the factors of 40 over all the factors of 1. These factors of 40, the positive and negative of each of these. So I get 1, 2, 4, 8. Oh, I forgot 5. 5, 8, 10. Uh, what else do we got? Um, uh, 20 and 40 over all the factors of 1. So it's just all the whole numbers, which is nice. And then we could use synthetic division on this. So I'll I could go, let's try 1, see if it works. I have 1, negative 7, 2, and 40. I don't have any gaps in my exponents, so we can just go down from there. So 1 times 1 is 1. Get negative 6. Get negative 6 here, which gives me negative 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So that's 36. So that gave me the point 1, 36, which could help you, but uh, not something in pre-calc that you might want to consider. So 1 didn't work. Let's see if 2 is going to work for us. So I'm going to do the same thing on our original. So 1, that's going to give me negative 5. That's going to give me a negative 10. That's going to give me a negative 8. That's going to give me a negative 16. That's going to give me a 24. So that tells me the point 2 comma 24 exists on our graph, which is fine. Uh, still not there, and I'm, I haven't started the negatives yet, so let's try to see if 4 works. Bring that straight down, so I get 4, bring that straight to add those, it gives me a, uh, it should be a 40, sorry, that gives me a negative 12, that gives me a negative 10, negative 10, hey, that's negative 40. Look what I found, friends. That means that x minus 4 is the binomial, so that means x is equal to 4. That's one of our solutions. Now, I can take this right here, and it had been x to the third, but now it's going to be x to the second. And you can say, hey, can I factor that? In this case, yes, I can. It'll factor nicely. So that means that x is equal to 5, which is one of our solutions. 
and x is equal to negative 2, which is also one of our solutions, is this with the negative of it. So I have three solutions to my problem. It was raised to the third power, so that's what you want. Okay, so determine the first po possible rational roots. Okay, divide the constant, all the roots of the constant, over all the roots of the uh, lead coefficient. Use synthetic division to see it until it works. And then the remaining zeros, you can factor or continue to test values to get new coefficients. Okay, so find all the zeros. So plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 2 over all the factors of 1. So again, let's start out with 1, see what it works. Bring that down. 1 times 1 is 1. Add those, that gives me 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Gives me 0, 0 times 1. That gives me negative 2. So that means that the point 1 comma negative 2 exists on our graph. So that's not going to work. Let's try negative 1, see if that works for us. Bring that straight down. 1 times 1 is negative 1. 0, 0 times negative 1 is 0. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. So we get 0. So look at that. Negative 1 comma 0 is a solution. Okay. So that means I can go ahead and put my x's back, back in there. Well, it was x to the third. Now it's going to be x to the second plus 0x minus 2, which is x squared minus 2 equals 0. And you can solve this pretty easily by just adding 2, taking the square root of both sides, which means I have x equals, don't forget the plus or minus. So you have a couple of irrational answers, which synthetic division would not have found for you. Okay, So they have to be um, rational roots, not irrational, rational. So they could be a fraction, could be a decimal. All right, next one, I'm going to take all the factors of 25. over all the factors of 2. All right, so let's go ahead and you go through. So I have 1 is the first one. I always like starting with the smallest. They used to be mean to us in college and have some middle terms be the coefficient. So it got kind of nasty, especially when we didn't have a calculator. So I got 2. 2 times 1 is 2. It gives me 3. 3 times 1 is 3. It gives me negative 47. It's negative 47 up there. So that's negative uh, 73, 72, excuse me. So that means the point 1, comma, negative 72 exists. All right, well, let's see if 5 is going to work. So 2, 2 times that's 10. That's going to give me 11. That's 55. You're good. That gives me 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Hey, look what I found, my friends. 5 comma 0 is the solution. Okay, so let's plug our x's back into this. Well, it was x to the third. Now it's going to be x to the second. And we can go ahead and factor it. So we could, being we have two numbers that are pretty simple, I think I'm going to have a 5 there and a 1 there, plus and plus. So that means I'm going to get uh, negative 1 half, which would have been a solution. And then negative 5 as well, which also is a solution. So I have here, here, and where's my other solution? Oh, it's uh, right here. Those are my solutions. So 5, negative 5, and negative 1 half is where it would have crossed or touched the x-axis. All of these would have been crossing because they didn't happen multiple times. Okay, so take a look at the homework. Uh, that would be on 6L. And uh, take a look at the odds and see how you do with those. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.